I thought we were talking about masculinity. We are. No, we're not. Yes, we are. What? How are we talking about masculinity? Because I'm asking you what you think of men and of women. Isn't no, that... basically what you've been trying to do, I would say for the last 15 minutes, is put me into a sequence of corners by accusing me of various forms of misbehavior. According to you, what is a real man or what should he be? You should want the best for people, for you, for your family and for the community. Courage is a good thing. Courage in the face of life's difficulties. You know, yeah. one of the things I tell my, suggest to the people who are watching my videos, for example, is that a good ambition is to be the most reliable person at your father's funeral. You think that nowadays men lack virility, that they're not men anymore? No, I think they, I think that you could make a case that they are punished for those virtues and so are less likely to feel confident in their expression or development. You feel that society nowadays t tells men that it's not okay to be ambitious? I, I think it's definitely the case that, that that happens. It's certainly not encouraged, it's, it's discouraged b because of the confusion between, the, the purposeful confusion in my estimation, between power and competence. You think the hierarchy of the patriarchal system is a good one? Well, first of all, I'm not convinced that the uh, theory that what we have is a patriarchal hierarchy is correct to begin with. I don't think that way because I, I don't understand precisely what that means. Does that mean that women had no role in shaping our society? It's, it's, it's only been the last 10 years that people have made the presumption that it's self-evident that what we live in is a patriarchy. What, what women haven't contributed? Is this, is this the point we're making? Is that women haven't contributed to our society? They just weren't there until, what, 1965? And all of a sudden they took their place. All the women before that weren't doing anything at all. It was all patriarchy. But you don't feel that globally uh, men have the better end of the stick? No! Well, no, I don't believe that globally men have the better end of the stick. Like, what? I don't... I don't understand why people would even begin to conceptualize the world that way. Better in what way? Roles of power in businesses, politically, men pretty much rule the world, no? Well, what about in warfare? What about in dangerous jobs? Who gets killed in war? Who fights in war? Men. You have uh, women who are soldiers in the army nowadays. Yeah. It's opening more and more. Yeah. Well, no, we're Is not going to go down that. Is a woman soldier not as good as a man soldier? I don't know whether a woman soldier is as good as a man soldier. I know that in most armed forces, women aren't placed in high combat frontline positions. Who is responsible for this, the demasculization of the society? Feminist groups have a fair bit to do with it, and the radical left types that insist that what we live in is a patriarchal tyranny. What is the issue with uh, feminists nowadays? They think that the idea that our culture is a tyrannical patriarchy is an axiomatic truth. Well, I think that's complete nonsense. The insistence that uh, sex, gender identity and gender expression are social constructions, the insistence upon that, the insistence that if there are any differences in outcome, that's a consequence of oppression. That's what's up with them. All of that's complete bloody nonsense. You have the feeling that feminism has gone too far? Far too far. But it's the leftist very, it's not so much feminism, it's, it's really the, the, uh, the ideology that characterizes the radical left. Feminism is part of that. Even though there were still huge uh, inequalities... Uh, what inequalities are we talking about precisely? We're talking about wages, access the to wage positions gap of has power... Nothing to do, the wage gap has nothing to do with prejudice, or virtually nothing to do with it. Single men and women in their 20s... In fact, there's a wage advantage for single women in their 20s. So, if there's any gap at all with regards to wages, it's a gap between there is, people I mean, and mothers. Most of the data in all of the countries, you know, come up to that conclusion that a woman who has the same position as a man... Women and men who do the same job, the women end up getting paid less? Yes. And you control for everything else? No, sorry, the data's wrong. There's at least 16 reasons why men get paid more than women. Men work longer hours. If you work 10% longer hours, you make 40% more money. Okay, men work in more dangerous positions, so there's a wage advantage for working in more dangerous positions. Men are more likely to move as a consequence of being required to by their job. So, so men are... I, wait, I, there's more. I, I understand, well, wait, what, I understand what you're like, saying. You're saying that there were many, um, um, many different points that explain why we come up to that final statistic, 
but that if you look at the reasons why, then it's because men work longer because they move uh, more mm -hmm. than women and they... They work in more dangerous positions. They're I'll more likely I'll, to work outside. I'll take you on that. I They're more likely to, to work in STEM fields. They're more mm -hmm. likely to work in fields where you can scale. If you look and, and you say, well, on average, women make less money than men, which is also different than saying that they make less for doing the same work, because those aren't the same claims, mm -hmm. then you have to say, well, what are the reasons that are contributing to that? You can't just say, well, it's a consequence of gender discrimination, unless you can only think about one thing at a time. And I would say that's another problem with the modern feminists, is they can only think about one thing at a time. You said in an interview that to stop harassment in the workplace, a good start would be women stopping wearing lipstick. No, I did I didn't say that. My question is, you were talking about sexual harassment yeah. in the workplace yeah. and you said that one of the issues maybe was women wearing lipstick because why do they do that? It's to create sexual arousal. It wasn't an arousal. issue with regards to enticement to sexual harassment. It was an issue to what are the rules governing male and female behavior in the workplace. And if makeup is a sexual signal, then why should it be acceptable in the workplace? Well, what the hell do you think makeup is for? Why do women wear red lipstick? Just out of curiosity. Why do they rouge their cheeks? Because Why they red? want to feel beautiful? Look, I mean, the ideas that I'm putting forward here with regards to makeup aren't contentious. This has been studied. We know perfectly well what sexual signaling does, what, why people wear makeup, why women wear makeup. But it's too, I mean it's too, when it's, you say that, when you say yeah. these kind of things, uh, a woman may think that, oh, then I might be responsible. Uh, for what this guy at the office said to me because, yeah, I was wearing makeup, so then that I'm the, the one to be blamed. That do wasn't you, the point I was making. No, but do you understand that for a woman watching this and who is a victim of uh, sexual harassment in the workplace... Do I don't care like that, about we, that. You don't care about what she may feel after she no, hears you? No, I don't care. I really don't care particularly what people feel about facts. What are the rules exactly governing the behavior of men and women in the workplace? NBC, no hugging. Okay, that's a rule now. Okay, how about no sexual displays in the workplace? None. How about that for a rule? Now, I'm not saying that that's a rule that we should adopt, but I am saying that if we're going to have a culture-wide conversation about the difficulties of men and women working together, then we better bloody well make sure that we get the rules straight. Now, when the Maoists took over China, they had men and women wear the same uniform. No makeup, same haircuts. Why? To eliminate all of that. I didn't that, say that, that if a woman wears makeup, that's any excuse for a man to harass her. I just said that if she's wearing makeup, that's sexual signaling. And that is what it is. My vision of it is that, in a way, it puts the blame on women and it gives the guys a free pass. Well, you can interpret it that way if you want, but that isn't how I see it. And that's also not what I'm implying. And I don't, I think that it's appalling that women are treated badly in the workplace by, like, unsophisticated men who have no idea how to govern their impulses. In a video you said that the problem with those angry women is that since at the end of the argument you cannot fight physically, you can't really deal with them. <laughs> that's not what I said. I said that that's one of the things that keeps conversation between men civil. Women can't argue with angry women. Women are often bullied by angry women. What I meant was more, uh, you, uh, you, you, you said that, and I'm really like not trying to paraphrase you or, you know, to put words into your mouth. Uh, you, you, you actually you said, you are trying that no, directly. No, it is things that you said, that you cannot deal with uh, those Yes, uh, but don't tell me that you're not trying to put words into my mouth because you've selected what you're going to ask and you selected it very carefully with a tremendous amount of forethought. Well, I, no, and I, there's a purpose for that. What is the purpose precisely? I am, I am quoting things that you said. Why? Because, what is it that you're trying because, to establish? Because you said that. I'm I thought we were talking about masculinity. We are. No, we, we're not. Yes, we are. What? How are we talking about masculinity? Because I'm asking you what you think of men and of women. Isn't no, basically that... what you've been trying to do, I would say, for the last 15 minutes and is put me into a sequence of corners by accusing me of various forms of misbehavior. So the, why are we the, doing that? The, What's the point here? These are things that you said. Uh, my That's job my as a journalist is to ask questions about what you represent and the ideas that you defend. Your, isn't your it? job is also to select the things that you might ask about in some manner that doesn't indicate a substantive bias. You picked three things to talk to me about in the last 20 minutes that were very carefully selected. Like, why did you pick those things? Because this is my job. No, not necessarily. You could be asking me, for example, why I've spoken to 250,000 people live in the last eight months. 
that might be more newsworthy. Well, we're not going to have a, a big debate about journalism, but uh, if a journalist doesn't ask the tough questions, how can you give the good answers? But it depends on what the tough questions are. It depends well, on the I didn't way, think that they would be tough. We're talking about things that you said. I mean, if it's easier to have conversation between men, because there is this underlying threat, you know, of a uh, physical uh, contact. I don't think it's easier. Mm. It tends to be somewhat more civil. So, fighting is the ultimate way of resolving the conflict? It's a good question. It's a good question. The ultimate way of resolving a conflict is to negotiate for peace, if you can manage it. But if you can't negotiate for peace, then what are the alternatives? Men follow you, listen to you. Because they need encouragement. And they need a reason for growing up. And I encourage them and give them a reason to grow up. What are you it's better to grow up than to stay immature. Are you a father figure? Uh, uh, Sometimes. A, a prophet, in a way? A guru? Uh... I don't believe that I'm a guru. Mm -hmm. I don't think that you can be a guru and tell people to take their own way. You know, I'm asking people to develop a vision for their own lives and to adopt the responsibility for that, but it has to be something that's personal. But, but do you feel responsibility then? Yes, absolutely. Fundamentally, um, this is supposed to be helpful to people. What if I told you that you're playing on young men's distress to make all that money? That accusation has been leveled at me before. I don't know how I'm playing on their distress, exploiting it or helping it. The fact Look, is, I've a said lot of right people... from the beginning that I'm an evil capitalist. I don't make any bones about it. I'm not ashamed of making money. It's very hard to make money. Can I ask you bluntly how much you make? Um, I make $80,000 a month on Patreon. My book is selling about 20,000 copies a week. I have royalties that probably amount to something approximating a dollar fifty on each of those. Um, the tours garner about thirty-five thousand to fifty thousand dollars an evening. I have a business that's generating, I don't know, um, something in the neighborhood of two hundred and two hundred thousand dollars a month for me personally. There's some other smaller sources of income than that. You are making a lot of money yes. out of this. I certainly am. And so are a lot of other people.